Your Friday morning. Thanks for ending the week with us yeah. here on Up With Krem. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. You know, we appreciate you joining us here on a Friday. You, five we, days. Five whole days. <laughs> you know, you might be a little tired after that Coogs win I last know. night. <laughs> I'm pouring an extra cup of coffee today. That's okay. Pour up an extra cup. You deserve to celebrate. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick, though, is getting us ready for the day ahead. And take a look at that monitor behind him. His monitor off. isn't off. It's actually on. But that's just how foggy it is outside. Yeah, I, will, I know this probably looks awkward. That, that it looks like I messed up. Did I turn my monitor off? No, I didn't because it is that incredibly foggy. Even Tim was telling me this morning, this looked like it was probably the foggiest he had ever seen it downtown in the past two to three weeks here. And it's been foggy more often than not. There's the latest look along the I-90 corridor. Traffic moving smoothly, but it is very foggy. So let me just show you how this is looking directly at the pavilion. There is a light that you can see. It's way in the bottom corner of the screen here. And if you really squint at this black image, you might be able to see some of the streaks of those lights. I'm kind of covering them up where I see them on my monitor. So the pavilion is somewhere around there. That's about as best as we could do because it is that incredibly foggy at the moment. It is 29 degrees. Again, you can see maybe a few of the lights now that I've pointed a few of them out, but it is again very, very foggy this morning and we're seeing that throughout Spokane County and into Coeur d'Alene with that visibility at a half mile or less, likely near zero in some cases along the Metro corridor. Spokane County started sending out ballots, so you should be getting yours in the mail any day now. So this ballot is for the presidential primary election, and our Nicole Hernandez is joining us live here in studio for us this morning. And Nicole, this ballot is a little bit different than the normal ballot, right? Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Tim Channing. So a couple of things that I want to talk about. This here is what your ballot's going to look like when you get it in the mail. It's going to look different. That's okay, though. This is just kind of how the primary works. We've done this before, similar to what we saw four years ago. So the way this is different is you have the Democratic Party on this side, Republican Party on this side. You can only vote in one of these boxes. If you fill out both of these boxes, your vote will not count. So number one, you have to pick a box and you have to vote and only one. When you get to the end and you fold up your ballot and you put it in the envelope, you also have to write on the outside of the envelope which box you chose. What you write down and then what you voted for has to match for your vote to count. The other last thing that I want to talk about about this specifically is these candidates on the list, not all of them are in the race anymore. So for the Democratic Party, we only have Biden and Phillips still in the race. Williams actually kind of declined the race. She, she dropped out there just a little bit ago. Republican Party, same thing. Only Nikki Haley and Donald Trump are still in the race. The rest of those candidates are no longer in the race. So if you are voting, make sure you're voting for a candidate that's still in the race. Now, once the primary is over, the Democratic Party will give delegates to every candidate who gets at least 15% of the votes. The more votes, the more delegates you get. The Republican Party will give votes to anyone who gets more than 20% of the votes. If any of them get more than half of the votes, though, they would get all of the Republican delegates for the state. And then all those delegates eventually go to each party's national convention to officially decide who each candidate will be. The nomination of president with the political parties has to be done by the party process. So as people are watching the news, you notice other states are, are doing this, like New Hampshire and Iowa, and some of them are caucus states and some are primary states, but it's an internal um, party process. And this is backed up by the U.S. Supreme Court. So specifically for this primary, ballots have to be in by March 12th at 8 p.m. Just like other elections, you can either get it into a ballot box or postmark in the mail by then. If you're not registered to vote yet, you can still register online <laughs> or by mail until March 4th. And then you can register in person until March 12th. In studio, Nicole Hernandez, Crime 2 News. And happening today, Republican candidates are getting in a last wave of campaigning to get supporters to the South Carolina primary polls. Former President Donald Trump and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley are facing off in her home state tomorrow. Yesterday, Haley touted a new poll showing she has a better chance of defeating President Biden than Trump. Right now, Trump has a lead over Haley among likely GOP voters, with some voters saying it could prove difficult for future campaigning. Trump is so far ahead of her, she has no chance. If you don't carry your home state, you're going to have a tough time winning down the road. 
Early voting ended yesterday with more than 160,000 voters already casting their vote. We'll be watching this one closely and have results as they come in. Well, it is always a good morning to be a kook, especially today. Last night, the number 21 WSU men's basketball team knocked off the number four Arizona Wildcats in a nail biter upset. Oh my goodness, down to the wire. It was down to the wire, <laughs> an amazing game. It was yeah. phenomenal. The Kooks are now in first place in the Pac-12 for the first time since 2007. Our sports director, Travis Green, has all the highlights from the big game. A 16 year wait came to an end this week. The Cougs crack in the top 25 for the first time since 2008. Another drought on the line last night. First place in the Pac-12 up for grabs. The last time WSU sat atop the conference was February of 2007. A tall task for Kyle Smith and crew up against fourth ranked Arizona on the road. Jalen Wells came to play in this one, scored a team high 13 in the first half. Three here puts the Cougs up six. Can't say enough about Ruben Chinyelu. The game of his career, a double-double, 12 points and 11 rebounds off the bench. But Arizona just would not go away. Caleb Love had an answer all night. Cougs would lead 34-33 at half. Second half, Cougs trailing. Isaac Jones, after a quiet first half, burst onto the scene. alley -oop jam here, part of a 10 straight points he'd score for WSU. Game came down to the final minute, though. Love had 27 points for Arizona. The and one here for a three-point Arizona lead. So trailing with 30 seconds left to go. Miles Rice misses a potential tying three. Andre Yakimovsky gets the board and finds Wells in the corner, who not only makes it, but gets the foul. Here's another look for you on a different angle. Wells would make the freebie, the four-point play with a one-point lead. Arizona would have a chance with seconds left, but Love would trip for a travel. WSU goes into McHale Center and completes a season sweep of fourth-ranked Arizona, 77-74. to Jalen Wells, the hero, a game winner, and 27 points. How about that? And the Cougs are now in first place at the Pac-12 Conference for the first time since 2007. That's going to do it for sports. How about that? The Cougs next take on the Arizona State Sun Devils tomorrow. Tip-off is set for 5 p.m., and on Monday we will see how those games impact WSU's rankings. Well, the conditions this morning are very foggy between Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, but thankfully that fog is not going to last all day long today. In fact, mostly sunny skies and temperatures near 50 degrees. It's going to make today one of our nicer days weather-wise. So we just got to get through those couple hours of morning fog to unlock that sunshine. There's no high level cloud cover. It is just all that shallow layer of fog that we're seeing right now. And it remains pretty quiet for a couple days until this strong storm system hits on Sunday. Rain and wind at first, snow on the backside of that cold front. We're going to go over this storm in detail in terms of its rain, wind and snow impacts all across the Northwest coming up in a few minutes.